going to demonstrate how we raise and lower the dinghy and how the struts work that take the, uh, the davits out. So here's a remote control, wireless remote for the dinghy. So you've got up, down, out, and in for the controls. And you can operate these all independently, wirelessly. And just like every other system on Obsession, we've got a backup. So here's the backup manual controls concealed here. And then you can see the control right there. So in and out, obviously. This is a system that Sunreef's been doing on a lot of their cats over the last 10 years. They've really got it refined. It works effortlessly, extremely reliable, great strength. And I'll show you how we're going to launch the dinghy with the remote and how the uh, chalk system works. All right, so we're launching the uh, Williams Diesel Jet 505 tender. This weighs about 1,800 pounds as an inboard diesel drive. I showed you earlier in the engine compartment, we have the ability to fuel the dinghy with a conventional fuel fill from the engine compartment. We've got a hose that'll come right to the dinghy. Great autonomy. And you can see how easily these davits are moving out. They're set up so they match the coach roof shape so they don't look obtrusive. And they're very concealed once they're rolled all the way in. And then when we uh, lower it, we go ahead and move these chalk here out of the way. We secure it back down and then we'll put it back down in the water. All right, that's a wrap, huh? Obsession has a passer rail. This is hydraulically uh, actuated. It goes out well past the transom. We're not gonna take it out all the way because there's a piling right here. Uh, it wouldn't be safe to do that. So there's an offshore door here that secures it. And then there's also a smaller door inside. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, send it out now. And it went all the way extended. There's a stanchion that comes up here, and then that handrail gets, uh, gets tight. And it rolls right back in, and then closes. You can adjust the height. And this is all done with a wireless remote. So if you wanted to secure the boat, let's say you're in the med or somewhere where you're stern to, you can actually walk off the boat, roll in the, uh, the passer rail, have that to where it'd be impossible for anyone to get onto the boat directly from the dock without using the passer rail. And then when you return back to your boat, you hit the uh, remote and roll it back out or lower it down to where it's easily accessible. We're in the starboard aft transom of Obsession. Here we have the fittings where the swim ladder goes in. That's stored in the locker there. The owners very thoughtfully added these steps, really easy to walk on and off the boat. You got your shore power cord connections here. There's a box that, uh, that conceals that when the cables aren't connected. We have a uh, shower here. This is a uh, deck wash down. Emergency tiller fitting. We have blue uh, courtesy lights as you come up onto the boat. You got some cleats, pad eyes here. This is the manual control for the passer rail before we were operating it with the uh, wireless remote. Back here on this side, we have a uh, water mixing tap, and this is for the shower, the overhead rain shower that's here. This is such a neat feature. It's an expensive option, but obviously Obsession is super well equipped. And then we've got video cameras here. These show up on the chart plotters on the transom so they can be viewed from the helm station. And there's video cameras in each one of the engine compartments as well. 
and I'll just uh, turn on this this tap. Hot and cold water, of course. The water drops straight down when it's not blowing 23 knots like it is today. How great it would be to go for a swim, come up here on the back of the boat, take a shower right there, have a cocktail, relax, lay out in the sun. We're in Obsession's port side engine compartment. What you see here next to me are four independent compressors that operate the chilled water air conditioning system throughout the boat. They are super efficient. The reason why these are all covered with this insulation is this is where the chilled water rolls through the air handlers into the rest of the boat, circulates through and comes back. In normal operating conditions, we're in the Caribbean right now, two of these compressors are sufficient, but there's the ability to run all four of them simultaneously and really keep the boat cool if people are going in and out and there's a lot of activity on the boat. Here behind me is a dive compressor. This uh, is a Bauer Junior, very good quality. These are day fuel tanks. So these allow fuel to come from the fuel tank get cleaned going through the, uh, the filters and the Algae X polishing system. And you can see you've got perfectly clean diesel fuel in the sight gauge here, and that's what goes into the engine. If you were to ever have any contaminants in the fuel system, you'd be able to identify it before it actually goes into the engine. And so the fuel essentially gets scrubbed before it's either burned in the engine or generator. Just below you here, I'll, I'll show you. This is a 240 horsepower turbocharged Yanmar diesel engine. Here we got the pre-filters for the sea recovery water maker. This is the water maker, uh, an aquamatic control system here. This whole housing has a 29 kilowatt Onan generator in it. When we were up at the helm station, I'd showed you the pump switch, turn on the pumps for either bilge or firefighting. And that's what these switches are for here. This one is for a high volume emergency bilge pump that's driven directly from a PTO off the engine that either will suck out water from the engine room or from the midships area in the boat. And then you have these two levers here that are linked together. Both these valves switch over and you can either go into firefighting mode that's where it gives you a high capacity water hose for firefighting, or you can switch it down to where it's pumping water out of the, uh, the bilge at a very high rate in the event of an emergency. A lot of backup systems on the boat. You can see there's a lot of redundance. This is the second generator on the boat. The other one's on the other side. You can see you have a panel here with all the electrical controllers for the generator and engine. All clean, nicely organized, easy to read, well labeled. And then behind me, you've got your uh, fuel filters here, an Algae X system. This is the filter system for the generator. This is the one for the engine. You've got the fire suppression system here. This is the controller for the electronic shift levers on the boat from Avantec, an extra 24 volt outlet to run either uh, an appliance or tr some troubleshooting equipment. It's really a well thought out, well illuminated, super clean engine room and really points out how clean and well maintained this boat is. And there's also even a video camera in the engine compartment that goes from here down looking at this part of the engine. So if you're at the helm, you can bring up a screen on the chart plotter and see what's going on in the engine compartment. We're going in now into the starboard engine compartment. I'm going to show you the generator, the engine, and a really neat feature that this boat has that makes the dinghy far more useful. And here on the starboard side, these are the shore power and generator power controls coming into the boat. You can see right now we're connected to 
two 50 amp shore power cords coming into the boat. They combine, make 100 amps. The boat will run on one 50 amp cord. And then you have the ability here to switch between the two generators to power the boat. And you have auto, off, and manual switches here. These are all set to auto because there's electronic controls on that flat screen panel I showed you at the helm that allow you to switch between generator, shore power, combined shore power, inlets, whatever you choose. So it gives you a huge amount of versatility on what's powering the boat, whether it's the inverter, one of the generators, both the generators, one shore power cord, two shore power cords. Over here we've got starboard side day tanks. This is for the fuel system. And once again, this powers the engine and also the generator here on the starboard side. Behind me, this is the hydraulic pumps for the pass rail. Pass rail is contained up here and this slides out the, uh, the back and makes for the walkway onto the boat. All right, here's the uh, second water maker on the boat. Another sea recovery, high capacity water maker. Controls for the generator and alternators. It's the Onan generator here on this side. 240 horsepower Yanmar turbo diesel. You got the pre-filters for the water maker. And check this out. This is a fuel refill for the dinghy. The dinghy operates on diesel fuel, safe to store on board, and this draws out of the filtered diesel fuel out of the boat's day tanks to fill up the dinghy. Really great, great range for your dinghy and the convenience of being able to fuel it from the boat without having to go ashore. Find a place for a fuel dock in if you're in a remote area. Really clever design. So we're in the bilge on the uh, port side aft. This is in the floor of, of the galley. And what I wanted to show you is this machinery package. So this is about an $80,000 piece of equipment that was ordered when Obsession was built. Once again, a very thoughtful owner thinking about worldwide cruising. And what this is, is it's a power inverter. What this does is it brings in the shore power from the boat, whether it's 100 amp, 50 amp, 250 amps. It stabilizes the frequency and the voltage, and it allows the boat to operate all of its systems on either 50 hertz or 60 hertz, which is US, 50 hertz is European and a lot of places in the, in the Caribbean, and also on either 110 volts or 220 volts. It brings in the power, it cleans it up, stabilizes it, prevents any sort of voltage spikes that may damage the electronics or any of the equipment on the boat. And it's a very, very reliable system. What we can see here on the display is that it's operational. We've got 36 amps coming into the boat on two 50 amp cords. The power load level right now is 29%, so it's working at uh, quite a low power level even though we have most of the systems operation on the uh, boat right now. And in this compartment, there's air conditioning. This space has its own air conditioning unit. Here's the controller for it. I just turned it off here on the breaker. So you can hear and that's the compressor for the air conditioner in this space. This vent keeps cool air in here, so there's no risk of this uh, overheating. It's got an auto uh, shutoff system. It monitors the temperature in this area. And there's also a remote for this controller that's at the helm station. Once again, very thoughtful yacht owner, very thoughtful crew. It's been well placed, it's in a good position, it's air conditioned, super useful, gives the boat worldwide cruising capability. And what the crew did afterwards, they actually built a protector that goes over this space so it contains the cool air over the transformers. And if there was ever any sort of spill in the galley, 
duck and getting a liquid down in here. Very, very thoughtful. Okay, so what we have here is a wireless autopilot control. This is integrated with the Raymarine uh, autopilots. I showed you earlier that there's a redundant autopilot system. There's actually two on board. And then you have this, which is almost your third uh, autopilot control. Plus there's two more down below at the nav station. This is a yacht controller. It's a wireless controller that allows you to maneuver the boat with, uh, with the bow thrusters, with the engines forward, neutral, and reverse. And this is used for remote docking. So maybe if the crew's short or they're coming into an area where maybe it's a little bit tight and they need to look around the uh, boat, even though you've got great visibility from the flybridge here, there's a couple spots in the back that you actually can't see. A lot of times with crew, the captain will be talking to a crew member, but the captain can easily walk out here to the, to the side of the boat, look down, and move the bow thruster or the engines forward neutral and reverse, or even be down on the uh, aft deck if they're backing into a slip and control the boat with, uh, with this wireless remote. This is a very, very expensive option. Really nice to have and great peace of mind, once again, docking in tight marinas.